Happy Wednesday, readers. Today for reading workshop, you're going to need a box of crayons, highlighters, glue stick, and a pencil, your reading notebook, and your green ELA resource folder. Go ahead and open up your resource folder. Today, we're going to go into the second bundle that you were given. These are considered to be what we call mentor text. We are going to be using our mentor text throughout this unit on um, our notice and note signpost. You are going to look at the top of the pages and you're going to find the one that is entitled Crick Wing. Once you find the one that says Crick Wing, go ahead and take that out of your bundle. And then keep the rest paper clips so we will have them for the upcoming days. Go ahead and tuck that back into that pocket. Close your folder, make sure it's still in your notebook. And then go ahead and um, tuck this underneath your notebook. We're not going to need it quite yet, but we want to have it re ready. Today for your lesson, you were asked to watch the Pixar short video called Presto. Today is our first day focusing on our notice and note, signposts, contrast, and contradictions. So we're going to take a few moments to talk about what contrast and contradictions mean and how we notice those in um, books that we are reading or movies that we watch and um, in different references. So we're going to start with our notebook. So go ahead and open up to yesterday. Yesterday, you were asked to watch our introduction video where we said when you take a journey through a book, you're not going to forget to stop at any of the notice and note signposts. So these are areas that the author has provided us important information that we need to either slow down within our reading comprehension or to stop altogether to notice important information to further our comprehension. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the notebook and now we're gonna look at the chart you were asked to create by taking those two charts that you were given, cutting them to fit on one page. We're gonna start by looking at the top one and that is a signpost we're gonna focus on. So we're gonna use our highlighter and I'm gonna actually use my yellow and we're gonna highlight the signpost called contrast and contradictions. So when we have contrast and contradictions, the definition is a sharp contrast between what we would expect in a character and what we actually observe the character doing. So this is where their behavior is contradicting the previous behavior or well-established patterns and also contrast between characters or situations. Within a story, if we are being asked to annotate, which means we're marking up our text or making notes on the text to make sure that we understand there's important information that we need to look back at, we use the annotating um, symbol, which is the two letters CC. So write that in your notebook. So as we are looking at our story, you're going to write the letter CC if you see that a character is acting in a different way than we had previously had um, expected our character to act like. The clues to the signpost is being used within a text is a character is behaving or thinking in a way we don't expect or an element of a setting is something we would not expect. The next column, it says what literary element it helps us understand. So taking note of this contrast or contradiction happening, it will help with our character development. We can also understand better the internal conflict within our characters. It can help us realize what the theme within the story is. So remember theme is the message that the author is um, wanting us to learn or to apply to our own lives. And also about the relationship between the setting and the plot. So as we saw in Tiger Rising, um, the setting and even the plot of the story helped us to better understand our characters um, within that story. And some of the anchor questions we can ask ourselves when we notice that a contrast or contradiction is happening is, why would the character actor feel this way? Or how do the how do the characters contrast between, or how do the contrast between characters help us understand them? So when they're acting differently, how can we kind of relate those back and forth to have a better understanding? How might contrast between situations help us predict plot or conflict? So these are all important things that we need to make sure that we're um, paying close attention to. We're gonna go back to the clues to the signpost. So these clues, refer to things that we are going to take notice in today, not only in our mentor text, but also within that Pixar short film. So things that we don't expect our character to do. So we're going to start by talking about the um, short film called Presto. 
So if you go ahead and turn your notebook back to the way it was, we're going to start by looking at our first flip book. So the first flip book is going to give us some reference information that we're going to use, and then we're going to make our notes about the short film and the mentor text in our booklet. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna use your crayons to quickly illustrate or to draw to show that we are focusing on this one. So the first um, flap that we're focusing on is contrast and contradiction. So go ahead and we're gonna just darken the two letters that are the symbols that we use when annotating the text. Go ahead and quickly shade that in just to show that this is the tab that we have covered or are covering currently. Go ahead and use your purple like Mrs. Ling is using. You can just shade that in quickly. And then you're going to do the same thing with the name of the signpost, contrast and contradiction. So you can go over it with your crayon, make it a little darker. And then you may also shade in um, lightly if you want to behind. All right, when you are done tracing the words contrast and contradictions, go ahead and open up that flap. And we're going to remind ourselves of what this is, our definition for this signpost, how we can look for it within the text, so our text clues, and then what questions should we as readers be able to answer to better understand our story. So the definition, go ahead and just highlight where it says definition, is a sharp contrast between what we would expect and what we observe the character doing and the behavior that contradicts the previous behavior or well-established patterns. The next is the text clues, so things that we might notice within a story. A character behaves or thinks in a way we don't expect, or an element of a setting is something we would not expect. And then as readers, we should be able to then answer the question is, why is the character doing that? So we need to analyze why the change, why is the character um, doing something differently than what we would have expected them based on the previous behavior that we learned within a story. We're gonna go ahead now to our notice and note flip book. This is where the majority of our work is going to take place. We have two of each of our signposts, so you should have your tabs still um, made available so then we can track which um, signposts that we're focusing on. So we're gonna start by taking our notebook or our little booklet and flipping it over, just like we do when we have a thick booklet, we're gonna use a glue stick and we're gonna use it all on the back page to make sure it's gonna stay nice and secure once we glue it down. Turn it over and make sure it's nice and flat, smooth it out. And then we are going to be using, um, or we're gonna write on the front cover that the story or article is what we consider to be our mentor text and then we're going to be reading whole books. So today we're going to do the majority of the work together because this is our first lesson. Um, in the future, you're going to um, do the Pixar short or the initial modeling with Mrs. Ling on the first page of each signpost. And then the second um, page of the signpost will be independent work. So let's go ahead and open it up. The first page is what we said is going to be with our modeling of how to identify the signpost. So we're going to go ahead and um, create a format. So we're going to list our Pixar, sh Pixar short title. So the title of the short that we're going to watch today is called Presto. And the character that we're gonna be focusing on is the rabbit called Alec. So we're gonna write character and the character that we said we're focusing on is the rabbit named Alec. And as you watch the Pixar short um, about the rabbit and the music, uh, magician, you should have been able to um, determine some of the attributes or some of the things that the author of the short film have presented of how this character is or who this character is based on their actions. So we can say that the rabbit, rabbit in the film can kind of be dis, um, described as selfish. Um, he only wanted the carrot. So everything he was doing was only for that carrot. So he only wanted 
the carrot, and he was desperate. So we're going to always identify the character that we're going to look closely at within our story and then list some of the attributes that help us describe who the character is initially. So at the beginning of the film, what are the established characteristics that the author is providing to us? An example of this is he wanted... to help save Presto from falling to hurt himself. So an example where we first notice a contrast to the original um, way that the character is described. So if the character is originally described as someone who's selfish, only thinking of himself, he only wanted the carrot, he was desperate, didn't really care what was going on around him, and that was the um, initial way the character is described by his actions. Well, when we see the initial contrast or change of behavior or change in the actions of that character, we need to make sure that we're stopping and taking note. So the example of um, a part of the story that he was acting differently than we would have originally expected is when he actually stopped being so selfish and he was trying to figure out a way to save Presto from falling um, because he realized that he was going to hurt himself. So then we have to ask ourselves that original question from our um, original footbook. So why is the character doing that? So we're going to write a question. Why? is the character acting or feeling this way. So we're going to always take note of the question as a reader that we are trying to answer based on our noticing of this contrast in the character's original behavior. So we're going to say that why is a character acting or feeling this way? Well, he, I should have said he really didn't want Presto to get seriously injured. So within our um, understanding of this short film, we were able to focus on one of the main characters, the rabbit named Alec. We were able to establish some um, character traits or initial understanding of who we thought the character was based on their actions and the way that they were being shown to us. When we see that the character is suddenly acting in a different way than what we would have expected, then we need to stop and take note and we have to ask ourselves, well, why are they suddenly acting in a different way? So for Alec to suddenly um, try to save Presto um, from falling to hurt himself, well, he didn't want him to fall and hurt himself because he didn't want him to actually get injured. So he just was being selfish originally and decided that he really didn't want Presto to get injured just because he wasn't giving him the carrot like he was asking. So we're going to now um, try to apply this to our mentor text. So we're going to start by turning the page to use the second page today. This um, is going to be the independent part of our work. So typically you're going to be using the second page of each signpost and we'll set up our formatted page and then you'll read your mentor text to fill out the missing information. Today we're going to do it together. So at the top of the second page, you're going to write book. And this is the format that you will um, get used to writing. Then in a moment, we'll identify the character that we're gonna be focusing on. We'll list some character traits, so we'll leave that area blank for now. We're going to then find an example from the text where our character is going to suddenly be acting in a different way. So a contrast or contradiction to what we previously had the thought about our character and we'll take note of it. And then in the end, we're gonna ask ourselves the same question that we did in our, um, our modeling example. So why 
would the character act or feel this way? So why is the character suddenly acting in a way that we didn't expect? So our second page for each signpost is going to follow the same format. Today, we're reading the mentor text called Crickwing. And we're focusing on the character of Crickwing. So as I read the picture book today, you have your own copy, which is the page that we just took out of our, um, our green folders. As I'm reading, I want you to be annotating your text. So when we initially learn who Crickwing is as a character, you are going to be listening for um, parts in the story that maybe Crickwing is suddenly acting in a way we didn't expect. And if you encounter a spot where you think that Crickwing is acting differently than expected, you can mark your text with the CC. So remember we said that the CC, the um, two letters, are your way to annotate um, on your actual text for today. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and read. Remember, you're listening and annotating your text. Crickwing. Far below the great forest canopy lies a shadowy world that many insects call home. Among the damp clutter of fallen leaves and branches, leaf-cutting ants toil all day while large cockroaches await their evening search for food. One cockroach had looked like all the others until a close call with a hungry toad. In his wild escape from the toad's sticky tongue, he had twisted one of his fine long, or long wings. Since then, everyone called him Crickwing. Crickwing despised his nickname, and he avoided hearing it by staying far away from the other creatures. He would sneak out to find his food when the night was the darkest, knowing that the forest was crawling with predators even worse than ravenous toads. The forest seemed much less fearsome whenever Crickwing found a nice pile of tasty leaves, roots, and petals. He took comfort in their bright colors and interesting shapes, and he often built sculptures from them before he ate them. When he was busy playing with his food, he could almost forget the pain in his crooked wing. One night, Crickwing created his most wonderful sculpture ever. He was so absorbed in his work that he didn't hear the soft footsteps behind him. Pow! Swish! A sharp-eyed monkey clobbered Crickwing and swiped his sculpture. Crickwing dived for cover. I only let him get away with that because he's so big, he grumbled, cowering under a rotten log. Crickwing hid until the next night when hunger drove him out to the search for a meal. But as soon as he had added the final flower petal to his dinner, an enormous scaly lizard nearly gulped him down. Crickwing dodged and the lizard took off with his edible artwork. Another masterpiece ruined, Crickwing panted. I'm starving and my wing aches. I don't know if I can take this much longer. The next night, things got even worse. An ocelot pounced and nearly crushed Crickwing. When he darted away, the ocelot scooped him up in her massive paw and threw him high into the air. Oh no, Crickwing wailed, not again. When he landed, Crickwing scrambled about in a panic and leaped into a crevice under a stone where he collapsed in angry tears. I'm so tired of having to run, run, run from giant predators, he seethed. I hate being so small, and I hate never being able to finish a meal. I'm a mere exoskeleton. Through the long night, Crickwing's wing throbbed as he waited in his hideout. Many hours later, sunlight streamed into his cave, and the leaf-cutting ants began another busy day. Thousands of the tiny workers carried large slices of leaves back to their colony. Crickwing, groggy and still angry, crept out for a better look. Ha! These guys are even punier than I am, he muttered. None of the ants seemed to notice him. 
Crickwing inched closer. There's something about these eensy critters that just bugs me. Why isn't anyone bothering these little twerps? He placed a spiny leg across the leaf cutter path. Well, let's see what happens now, he chortled. Have a nice trip. See you next fall. Several ants stumbled and then went back to work as if Crickwing weren't even there. This will get their attention, he growled, picking up a leaf from the path. The ant carrying the leaf hung on tight, which gave Crickwing a dastardly idea. He hung several ants from a vine, one by one, and watched with glee as their tiny legs flailed. Crickwing laughed so hard that he nearly forgot his aching wing. That night, Crickwing wolfed down a sweet flower bud, not even noticing its dazzling purple color. He had work to do. Right in the middle of the leaf cutter trail, he dug a deep hole in the ground. Then he crouched behind a rock, waiting to see what the ants would do. In the very early dawn, the ants rose as usual and went to work. When they returned their cargo clamped in their jaws, they could barely see their way. They plummeted into the trap, piling into a great green heap. These muddling molecules are so easy to fool, snorted Crickwing. Back at the leafcutter colony, the queen of the ants called a meeting. This week's production is down, she barked. What on earth is going on? It's a cockroach, your highness, stammered Tara. He's picking on us, added Gravel. No cockroach meddles with our colony. Seize him, ordered the queen. The next morning, the ants found Crickwing fussing with his latest ant trap. He had no chance for escape as thousands of leaf cutters swarmed over him and dragged him back to the ant hill and marched him down its dark, winding corridors. When the tunnels narrowed, the ants crammed Crickwing through one final tight spot. Pop! His wing snapped back into place, and he realized that the throbbing ache was gone. Before he could give it another thought, the ants pulled their prisoner into a chamber and buried him up to his neck. For hours, the whole colony filed by, whispering to one another, how do you think he became so awful? And his mother must be heartbroken. That big old, or that big oaf showed up just in time for the annual peace offerings to the army ants, crowed the queen. There's no way they'll attack us if we ha hand this hefty no-gooder over to them. Trust him up like a fat turkey he is and ship him out. The leaf cutter bound Crickwing, hauled him back through the dim tunnels and carried him up into the forest. The ants hiked in silence for a long time. I can't do this, Eartha blurted at last. Neither can I, Tara sh shuddered. Remember the giant beetle we broke to the army ants last year? Yeah, they took him apart before we could even turn around and leave, quavered Gravel. Crickwing gulped. Nobody deserves that. Not even this big bully, said Eartha. I say let him go. He never really hurt any of us. What will we tell the queen, Tara gasped. And what about the army ants, Gravel howled. They'll leave our colony. I just can't watch them shred this guy, insisted Eartha. We'll figure something out on the way back. Let's go. The ants released Crickwing and fled. Crickwing was stunned. The queen is going to have their heads and the whole leafcutter colony is now in serious danger all because of me. Now that his wing no longer hurt, he could think clearly. I have to do something. But what? And then Crickwing had a brilliant idea. Wait, wait, he yelled, racing after the leaf cutters. I can help, wait. He described his plan and the ants listened carefully. We'll have to move quickly, but if every ant pitches in, I think it'll work, Crickwing said. Can we trust this Yahoo, yelped Gravel. Do we have much choice, snapped Tara. The plan is worth a try, and we'll do our best to win the patience of the queen, Eartha promised. But we don't have much time. Jump on my back, all of you, said Crickwing. I am one fast runner. 
In a far corner of the forest in the army ant camp, the lieutenant paced angrily. Those leaf-eating fools are late, she snarled. If we don't have our peace offering by tomorrow at dawn, we march in and take what's rightfully ours. As the hours passed, the army ants grew more agitated. At first light, the army swarmed from its nest, ready for the conquest. No one, shouted the lieutenant, absolutely no one keeps the army ants waiting. They poured like an angry river down the trail of the leaf cutter anthill. As the ferocious ants turned the final bend, they stopped dead in their tracks. For a long, silent moment, they stared at the hugest, strangest, greenest anteater they'd ever seen. It loomed high over them, its terrible tongue dangling from its mouth. The lieutenant's squeaky voice broke the quiet, Halt! About face! Run away! The, anim or the army ants tripped over one another as they scrambled back toward their camp, none of them daring to look back. Crickwing and the leaf-cutting ants peered from atop the leafy anteater's head, watching the warriors fade into the forest. They all held their breath until the entire terrified horde had vanished. Then the queen approached. I don't think we'll be seeing them ever again. Thanks to you and your enormous sculpture, Crickwing, she said. Or should we call you Straightwing now? We need someone to help us keep this anteater in order. So I hope you will decide to join our colony. And I hear that you're an incredible chef. Oh, I just like to play with my food, Crickwing replied. And please call me Crickwing, your highness. I would very much like to stay. The first thing I want to do is prepare a great celebration feast for everybody. Three cheers for Quick Crickwing, shouted Eartha. All the ants joined the cheer and then rushed into the forest. They gathered the brightest flower petals they could find and cut them into sparkling bits. All night at the banquet, everyone threw flower confetti, danced the sixth step, and sang until sunlight came creeping through the trees. The queen peeked at the dawn and blinked drowsily. I declare today a holiday, she yawned. Hear, hear, said Crickwing. And for the first time in colony history, the leaf cutters took a day off. The end. So as we were listening to the story of Crickwing and how he became to be, and then how he was originally described to us, um, and then there were different events that have happened to change the way that we might look at who Crickwink is as a character. So we need to initially say what our characteristics are of Crickwing. So we're going to make note and say that, well, originally Crickwing was bullied. And he also tried to bully others. He also was very angry. So when he was angry, he wanted to try to get back at um, the smaller ants because he wanted to make sure that they were suffering um, as he was being suffered um, with his own bully. So when we were first encountered by a contrast in the way that we perceived who Crickwing was, was the part in the story um, that said when he had an idea. So when you look back in your text, we're going to search for when he had a brilliant idea. So I'm just going to scan through. So where it says on page three, and then Crickwing had a brilliant idea. This is going to be the initial um, description of when he's going to be acting in a different way. And so instead of trying to be... Um, evil and create traps for the ants he's instead realizing that he is going to be helping um, someone to stay safe so we're going to go ahead and mark our text by putting a cc our characters acting in a way that we did not typically expect them to act in our book though we're going to write that um, example so we're going to start by putting our quotation marks and then we're going to copy the exact words from the author and then 
crick wing had a brilliant idea. And when we see that our character is suddenly acting in a different way, we need to ask ourselves as a reader, well, why would the character act or feel this way? So why is he changing the way that he's approaching his relationship with these ants? So we're going to write, he doesn't want the ants to get in trouble because they saved his life. So he didn't make this decision to help them just because they were ants, but it was because of the way that Tara and Eartha and um, Gravel decided to stop their, um, their journey on taking a um, bound crickwing for this offering and they said, you know what, we can't, we can't do this to Crickwing. We're not going to allow him to um, be torn apart just because someone told us to. So they decided to let Crickwing go and Crickwing, that had such an effect to him that they were willing to reap the repercussions of the queen's anger um, just to set him free that he decided that he needed to act in a way that was going to help them and helping them was to try to come up with a plan to help um, help them not get um, taken over by the other kind of um, ants. So we need to make sure that as we read our stories that there are times that the author is presenting um, important information where we need to realize it is a signpost, a place to slow down, to analyze, to try to deepen our understanding of why our characters are changing or um, contradicting the way that we are initially um, given descriptions about them. So we're re-emphasizing the importance of how we change based on situations. So today we modeled by watching a Pixar short called Presto. We then did um, more example practice using the book Crickwing, that's your mentor text. And then we're gonna continue with this pattern to keep going through the different signposts that we will cover for notice and note. As we are going through these signposts, you are going to have a new mentor text for each day. So please make sure that you keep these in a safe spot. What I suggest is that you fold your mentor text and as we complete them, you are gonna keep these in your notebook. So I'm gonna take my mentor text and I'm actually going to go back to our previous page, page 53, and then the chart. And this is where I'm going to keep all my mentor text that we have used. Take a picture of all of the work that we have completed today, including both pages of your contrast and contradictions, and submit to our assignment.